Okay, I just want to make a comment about the previous problem that we did. Oops. This one here. That, um, notice I didn't make the comment that uh, FBC is equal to zero. So that means this member is equal to, this member's force is equal to zero. And we determined this is zero, this is zero. Um, so it ended up that only AC had any force in it. Well, why was that? Well, we can look at it in, in another way. In other words, we have this um, 10 going down uh, and 10 going to the left there. If we took the resultant of those two forces, so if, in other words, if I had 10 kips going downward, 10 kips going to the left, well, the resultant is this force, which we could get by uh, the Pythagorean theorem, you know, the square root of uh, 10 squared plus 10 squared, uh, that would give us 14.14 um, kips. So that would be the resultant. And what would be the angle? This angle is 45 degrees. Uh, I think we can all agree with that because that's 10 kips and that's 10 kips. So um, it ends up that if we were to draw that resultant force on our truss, that would mean that the truss would, we would have the truss here, and then, that's not a very good 45 degree angle, let me draw it again, 45 degrees, approximately, and our force would be 14.14 kips at the 45 degrees, and then notice what that gives us, that gives us that there is a T, which means that this would have zero force, and we've already established that that is basically a T, which gives that a zero force. So just by the way that this thing is built, the only member that has any uh, force in it is, is this one. And so, again, if we eliminate the zero force members, which is one way to look at it, but maybe an oversimplification, is that we basically would just have um, one member with a force on that member. <laughs> Obviously unstable, but um, um, that is, in a sense, what we have in this particular problem, and that is why both BC and AB ended up to be zero force members. Now, the next problem that I want you to do, it's not going to end up that way because I now have different geometry. This is five feet, this is three feet, and, um, and then I have this coming down at an angle of 20 degrees. So I want you to take the same approach as the problem as the previous problem, you're going to get different answers, but use this geometry, uh, this weight, and, um, and solve this problem. So pause the video, solve this problem, first determine, take a free body diagram of, of the pulley, and find out, figure out the forces on the truss, and then solve the, for the forces in each member. Okay, so pause the video now. Okay, so what do we end up with? Well, we start with a free body diagram of the pulley, which means that I have a CX and CY, and I have, um, we can all agree that the tension in the cable is 50 kips, so I have uh, 50 kips at an angle of 20 degrees, I have 50 kips down, and then I can take um, the sum of the forces in the x and y direction to determine cy and cx. So if I take uh, the sum of the forces in the y direction equals zero first, then I'm going to have um, 50 sine 20 
in the vertical direction and 50 also in the vertical direction but going down and then I have CY going up so I have um, 50 sine 20 minus 50 plus CY equals 0 and that gives me CY is 32.9 kips I take the sum of the forces in the X direction I only have those two in the X direction so I've got CX minus 50 cosine 20 and I end up with CX is 47 kips. And again, so notice these are both positive, which means that I don't flip the arrows around. I have the 32.9 going up on the axle there, going to the right there. That means that on the truss, the 32.9 is going down and the 47 kips is going to the left. In other words, it goes to the right there, it goes to the left there, it goes up there, it goes down there. Again, adjacent free body diagrams, that's the way we need to make sure that there's, you know, equal and opposite forces there. So I now have this load on my uh, truss. I can take the free body diagram of point C and the, uh, you know, I have this free body diagram. I think you're all familiar with that. This is 59 degrees, that's given. And um, we can con convert this to FAC sine 59 degrees going down, FAC cosine 59 degrees going to the left. I now have this free body diagram. I take the sum of the forces in the y direction. I take the sum of the forces in the x direction, both of those equaling zero. And I can solve for um, FAC and FBC. The easiest way to do this, of course, is to do the sum of the forces in the y direction first because in the y direction, I only have one unknown, that's FAC. So I only have those two in the, in the y direction. In the x direction, I've got two unknowns. So first take the y direction, get FAC. Take the x direction, substitute FAC in to the equation for the sum of the fours in the x direction equals zero. And I get, um, so I get both FAC and FBC And then to get um, FAB, one way to do it is to take the free body diagram about point A. Oh, and then what do I have? I have um, um, I have. Well, let's see. I didn't get. Sorry, I didn't get the. Um, the reactions. Let's get now. We can get the reactions, for instance, um, and getting the reactions. You know, well, let's do that first. We didn't really need to. I could take this free body diagram to get FAB, and all I need is to take the sum of the forces in the y direction, and I can get FAB. Um, but I want to get the reactions. So I want to get the reactions also. So, um, taking moments about B, so taking moments about this point, we've done this enough times, we look at this free body diagram, and we have the 32.9 times 3 minus AX times 5, I solve for AX, and then I can take moments about A, I'm going to let you read these, I think you can all do these at this point, and then I take the sum of the forces in the Y direction, so I get all of the reactions and then like I said by taking free body diagram about that point we can we get FAB okay here's a different type of problem let me read it so you know basically what is it this is a a man on a swing and he's sitting on a scale here and 
this is the front view. So the swing looks like that. And the cable goes up from above his head, around and into his hands, and he's pulling on the, um, he's holding on to the cable. And, okay, so we have a scale underneath him. He's sitting on a swing, sitting on a scale. And the cable wraps around the pulley, and he's holding it in his hand. So, the question is, what does the scale read? Now, let's read the problem exactly. It says, a man that weighs 250 pounds, so he weighs 250 pounds, is holding himself up while sitting on a scale on a swing. What does the scale read? Okay, so let's talk about what a scale is. <laughs> a scale is simply a spring with an indicator that states what the force in the spring is. So in other words, the way we want to look at a scale, and we'll, you know, the easiest way to think about it is a spring scale. So if I have a spring scale, That's what it looks like. <laughs> and, you know, we have a weight that presses down on the spring scale. And, but the scale has the advantage that it, we get a reading. <laughs> we get a reading. Well, the reading is what? The reading represents the force in the spring. So that's the way you should think of a scale. Is a spring, but we get a reading from it. <laughs> now, what we're going to do is a, to think about a spring. A spring is simply like a truss member, pretty much, in that um, we, the, the, so this spring basically is a, a, a truss member that takes only compression in a way, because it only reads compression. So in a way, it's sort of the opposite of a cable. A cable only takes tension, a scale really only takes compression. So, but what we're going to do is we're, we're going to make a cut through that spring. So in other words, we're going to make a cut through the scale. And why are we going to make a cut through the scale? Because when we make a cut through it, and through the spring, through the scale, then we can figure out what the force in the spring is. If we can figure out what the force in the spring is, then we get the scale reading. So the force in the spring is equivalent to the scale reading. Um, so the um, the other thing that we know, need to note is that a scale, like I say, is in compression, is always in compression, and it gives us a positive reading in compression. So it's a little bit opposite to what we normally do. Tension is positive in our system. Compression is negative. But we have to recognize that we should get a, you know, if we treat it like a trust member, we're going to get a negative value for the, um, you know, we should get a negative value for the force in that trust member or spring. That negative value um, indicates compression, and then the scale reading is the positive or the absolute value of that force in that mem spring member. Okay, so this is the side view, this is the front view, so hopefully you can, it's hard for me to draw this. Okay, so how do we solve this? How do we figure out what, what is in the scale? Well, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make this cut that goes around like that. And um, and when we do that, of course, we have, it's one cable here, so we end up with, when we make the cut, we have a tension T, tension T, and then we have the weight of the person sitting there. So we have 250 pounds going down, we have T and T going up, and we end up with, of course, you can see it, the sum of the forces in the Y direction equals zero. So we have T is equal to 125 pounds. Then 
that's one free body diagram, but that gives us what's the force in the cable, but we want to um, we want to find out what is the force in the scale, so we need to make a different free body diagram. So this is a harder one to show. So I'm going to make a, make a cut through the cable in his hand. <laughs> the cable in his hand. Okay, but I'm not going to, so I'm going to make a cut through here, but I'm not going to make a cut through this part of the cable. Instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come around here and make a cut through the scale, and then now I'm going to go just over his head between the cables. There, so I'm not making it, right there is, is not a cut through the cable. And like I say, it's hard to show it, but it's like, there's, see that little hole right there over his head? In other words, I go around the person, through the, um, through the hole here, and then, you know, so I'm coming, let me say, see if I can show it, sort of right through there, through the scale, and then through this hole above his head. I think so that is what we're doing and so what we have left when we have that free but when we make that free body diagram then my free body diagram looks like this again there's no there's no cable force here because we did not cut the cable there and it's possible to do that we can free up that man by only making a cut through the scale and through the cable that he's holding. And if you can visualize that in, three, in 3D, you can see that. And so, in this free body diagram, what do I have? Well, wherever I made a cut, I have to put a force, or forces. In this case, I made a cut through the cable, so I put in the cable force, which is 125 pounds. I made a cut through the scale, so I don't know what it is, I just call it F scale. And then he weighs 250 pounds. So I put that down, and then I take the sum of the four. I look at this. I take the sum of the forces in the y direction equals zero. I solve for the force in the scale. It's 125 pounds. And it's toward the body, toward <laughs> toward the body, which means it's in compression, which is right for. Um, which is right for um, a scale in compression. Okay, so it's a similar problem, slightly different. You do this one. So the person weighs 200 pounds, and um, again, what does the scale read? So pause the video and, and do this one. Okay, so first we start with what? We start with a free body diagram that goes like that, which means now I've cut one, two, three cables. So I have three T's. I've got the 200 pounds here. So I take the sum of the forces in the Y direction, 3T minus 200 equals zero. I get T is equal to 66.7. And then again, I make that same cut that um, frees the person up simply by making a cut through the cable in his hands and, and under the scale. And I have 200 pounds going down, the scale force going up, the tension in the cable going up, and I end up, put that into my equation, all that equals zero. The force in the scale is 133 pounds, so the scale reads 133 pounds. Okay, I'm going to stop there.